Tony, I uh, had recorded a few or recording one earlier and they decided to cut the power. So I'm busy talking away and sharing and just enjoying God and power's out and <laughs> electricity's gone and so the recording was wiped clean. But that's cool. Even so, like we always do here on Devotion, we just go ahead and redo it. And in the meantime, we're doing Tozer, so. <laughs> just one of those days that's amusing to me because you can't treat things, interruptions, too seriously because, after all, you know, they may be sent by God, you know, to allow us to demonstrate where we are how we are with what God brings along our way. So, enjoy it. <laughs> That's what I always say. You're along for the ride. In Tozer, the praying man, purity and honesty are essential. You ask and you receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lusts, James 4.3. Prayer is usually recommended as the panacea or solution for all ills and the key to open every prison door. And it would indeed be difficult to overstate the advantages and privileges of a spirit-inspired prayer. But we must not forget that unless we are wise and watchful, prayer itself can become a source of self-deception. There are many kinds of prayer, as there are problems, and some kinds are not acceptable to God. The prophets of the Old Testament denounced Israel for trying to hide their iniquities behind their prayers. Christ flatly rejected the prayers of hypocrites, and James declared that some religious persons ask and receive not because they ask amiss. To escape self-deception, the praying man must come out clean and honest. He cannot hide in the cross while concealing in his bosom the golden wedge and goodly Babylonish garment. Grace will save a man, but it will not save him and his idol. The blood of Christ will shield the penitent sinner alone, but never the sinner and his idol. Faith will justify the sinner, but it will never justify the sinner and his sin. No amount of pleading will make evil good or wrong right. A man may engage in a great deal of humble talk before God and get no response because, unknown to himself, he is using prayer to disguise his disobedience. You know, I, I see that a lot. I mean, my personal opinion is that a lot of what people do in these prayer chains, in these prayer, prayer chains, prayer requests, prayer whatevers, that they tell everyone their problems and they pass on all the details of their life is sinful and evil. Is that you're putting before people things that do not need to be said because Jesus said that when you pray, go into your closet. He didn't say go to some prayer chain or some prayer meeting and you know expose yourself to every single person around. That to me is wrong. And it has been wrong from the beginning of fundamental Christianity all the way back to Pentecostalism. It is not meant to be a social time for you to divulge and indulge yourself in self-pity in front of other people. That is sin. That is seeking to make an idol out of feeling good rather than being good and doing what God said to do. If you have another person to pray with, great. Take them aside and pray with them. Don't start chains. Don't start prayer groups where it's an exposure to gossip and it's an invitation to sin. And it's an invitation to state and participate in things that are not godliness. Because whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are holy, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, we're told to think on these things. When a person goes to an elder for prayer, he isn't supposed to be going to an elder for prayer in front of the entire congregation and body of believers in order to show how holy they are or how sinful they are or how much they need prayer. Rather, it was meant to be that you go to the elders in private so that you could receive prayer and that they could minister to you directly as Jesus ministers to you personally and individually. A lot of what we do in Christianity is for show, and it is an abomination. And there is no doubt about it. 
And a lot of people wonder why they don't get an answer to their prayers. Jesus said it. It's pretty blunt and it's pretty easy to see. If Tozer himself could reflect on it and say that to the pastors who received it, then likewise we need to examine ourselves and see if we are doing what Jesus said in the scriptures or whether we are pretending to pray when really we're contending for sympathy from others. I think the reality is most people just want sympathy and they don't want God. Because a prayer chain accomplishes absolutely nothing as far as I'm concerned except for to let everyone know where you're at and what you're doing and woe is me, I am hurting. Misery loves company, but God answers prayer. The choice is our own whether we deify prayer itself or whether we put God in his place and allow him to meet us where we are and admit that we can't do it ourselves. And so, in need, I agree, reach out to someone, but don't tell the whole world the issues that you're facing, because in reality, all you're doing is setting people up for a fall, and you've already dug a pit for them to dive into, as you have been in there, bringing them by your chain into the same pit you're in. It's a sad state of affairs when we have to explain what Jesus said bluntly and very clearly and very succinctly without any explanation. And we have to go and explain that to people who think they're doing the right thing by inventing prayer cloths, prayer this, prayer that, praying in tongues, laying hands, doing all those things in front of people when Jesus said, do nothing in front of men to be seen of men. The hypocrisy today is obvious by the prayers of the people. If you can read it, it's more than likely it wasn't answered by God.